Good morning everyone and welcome to the Advent of Code 2019 using Erlang through some ad hoc unedited video. Um, low budget high design middle insights. Maybe today is day 10. So yesterday we solved the encode computer. Uh, let's see what we get today as we are up to date once again in all the puzzles. The monitoring station. You fly into the story belt, the reach series monitoring station. The elves here have an emergency. They have trouble tracking the asteroids and you can't be sure they're safe. Ooh, okay. The elves would like to build monitoring station in there and bridges. Each position is empty, each contains an asteroid. Oh. Is exactly in the center of its marked position. The asteroids can be described with XY coordinate when X is the distance from the left edge and Y is the distance from the top edge. Okay, so let's start taking note because we're going to use, you know, Cartesian coordinates where we have a zero here and a zero there. And we are going to be marking this way, essentially. And this is going to be the Y. This is going to be the X axis. All right. I'm just figuring out which asteroid would be the best place to build a new monitoring station. Monitoring station can detect any asteroid to which it has direct line of sight. Oh, that one is going to be interesting. That is, there cannot be another asteroid exactly between them. This line of sight can be at any angle, just not lines aligned to the grid or diagonally. Oh. Okay, that's going to be an interesting one because consider the following map. All right, at three four because it can detect eight asteroids. Yeah, it can detect this one, this one. Can it detect that one? Good question. This is the one at one zero. Let's view the asteroid blocked by the asteroid at two two. Okay. Um, uh, how are they doing that stuff to figure it out? Mm -hmm. Okay, there's an asteroid and some of the example lines of sight might be blocked. Yeah, okay. So the thing I'm wondering here is I'm getting what they're doing, but I don't know what they expect. Like, clearly you have to know their kind of line of sight algorithm they're using for that one because they went through the pain of specifying that you know uh the mass is in the center of the point and so um it does not need to detect in some ways but what is that oh wait so this one for example the big a okay they're giving us the lines there so that one, for example, the A, if we use a Manhattan distance that we had before, this is one down and three left. One down and three left. One down and three left. So the detection pattern could be done using that kind of, um, you know, the same X and Y distance across all of them. Uh, because that one here, two down, three to the right. Two down, three to the right. Two down, three to the right. Okay. So this is going to be an interesting one. At least I think I understand how they're doing the kind of little line of sight thingy of one, two, three, four. Well, three down, one to the right, 
one, two, three, one, three, one. Okay, so they're using that repeated pattern to find the distance to each one of them. Some larger examples. The best one is 58 with 33 other steroids detected. Okay. 35, 6, 5. Okay, so we've got plenty of tests. This is going to be helpful, finally. A bunch of them. Um, okay, get the puzzle input. It's not that large compared to the other. Well, it, it is super large from the point of view that it is a very dense map, so we're going to have a lot of checks to run. Okay. So I'm going to just save the input, but frankly, I'm going to work from all of these tests um, just because now the big thing is going to find a kind of strategy about how we're going to look into these. So I'm going to, you know, this one I'm going to have to uh, make a test for. To a whole test suite because otherwise it's going to be impossible to get through. So, latent suite. Uh, actually, just going to number them because frankly I don't have good values for each of these. The thing that's going to be extremely costly by default and all of that stuff is going to be to run the calculation for these. Um, and the way it has been described is we won't really have a choice but to uh, come up with that same exact kind of grid they have of how many can be seen from each one of them. And we can probably brute force it um, in a pretty annoying matter to figure out all the positions. So let me declare something. Uh, I'm going to call something test map one. Uh, I'm going to just call no, just going. Uh, just going to give all my inputs and outputs to the thing. Oops. What did I do? Oh, I think I know what I did. I copy pasted something and I had a uh, Vim macro in there and each period <laughs> repeats the previous operations. So a bunch of them, including the ones with the sevens and the dots essentially told the thing, repeat the operations many, many times. Okay. So, one thing that just popped into mind in terms of, you know, a thing I can do to uh, optimize the search is that 
I have the possibility here of I'm going to make some space in this one. The way I could search is, um, you know, start from the beginning uh, and just go left or right until I find a spot. I have to find where all the points are. And I could probably, in fact, that's probably a first good pass for this one. So the thing I could expect to have out of calling that one, so that would be a map. This would be the result expected. And the thing I will want in there was probably going to be to assert that uh, equal um, day 10 parse map, I don't know how I'm going to call it, map, uh, gives me the same thing as a result in here. And it's I'm not going to do it exactly this way. Uh, I'm going to call it a debug map because I'm not going to use this for my problem as I go. In fact, the thing I'm likely going to want to do first is to take this map and extract all the points there so that the output I'm going to want is going to be that I have one at uh, two zero. Then I have a point at, you know, uh, one, two, that should be um, five zero. Then I have one on the line belows that are going to be um, zero two. Then zero, uh, then one, two and so on. And because the patterns I had noticed in them um, where to find the other ones is that I'm going to be able to, oh wait, my little pattern I noticed in here is not entirely good. They haven't shown it here, but yeah, okay. Um, so anything that is going to be purely horizontal is not going to be visible, right? Um, and anything that's going to be purely vertical is not going to be visible. But the rest of the pattern is purely based on, if you search for the other points, what's the closest distance on this one? So clearing up the horizontal and vertical ones can probably be done rather easily just by comparing the coordinates. I don't actually need to know about all the empty points. I just need the fully populated ones. And, um, you know, this is going to give me a kind of a map with just these values around or something like that. Uh, it's more like this, but yeah, so I'm going to have something like that. So to find if one point is visible, I am going to be able to, for each of the nodes, kind of, okay, so I'm going to put these into a map, and inside the map I'm going to put a counter of how many are visible. And uh, the worry I have right now is that I don't want to try all the paths for all the things all the time, because um, you've seen the final map. Uh, it is uh, 20 by 20 grids. So if you have something that gets into exponential complexity, I don't judge this to be a good solution for now. I'm not going to be happy in just passing the thing through um, and waiting a minute for it to complete. So yeah, what I'm looking to do is essentially, you know, find a way to make the cost cheap. So the thing is, um, I'm going to be able to mark some things as not visible by going, if you know, uh, I found this one by going yeah, if I found this one by going, you know uh, can't let me If I found this one by going two down, then I can reapply the same pattern between the two uh, problems. And uh, by applying the same problem by going by two, by, by saying, you know, I made essentially, which is plus zero plus two, 
then if I do another plus zero plus two and I do this recursively until I'm out of bounds, I can clearly early mark all the things that are not going to be visible uh, and short circuit the processing I need to do at each step for each of the values that I have. So that's kind of what I'm going to do then. Um, I'm not going to store necessarily which one can see which one of them. Uh, I'm just going to try to first create my maps and my steps to make it work. So, um, okay, I'm going to keep this little value here. I'm going to create an intermediary step, which is going to be... Um, uh, sort of equal two zero five zero. I'm going to test this one more deeply than I did in the other days. Uh, then I'm going to have three two four two and five two. After that, the only one is five three. Four, four. Oh, God, I've messed up the indexing. This one is actually at one. And this one is at four. And zero, two, one, two, 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 three, two, four, two. End of the line. Uh, four, three, three, four, and four, four. And this is going to be equal to the sorted list of um, the chords. Uh, the chords on a given map. Okay, I'm going to why is it complaining on this one? Oh, this whole thing is not valid. I'm going to start with this very simple test. Uh, day 10. And it's going to break without a surprise because everything is undefined. Okay. Um, I'm going to narrow down my stuff a bit later. Right now I just want to get started on these. So uh, the map input I'm going to get is only a string. And my first thing is, uh, sorry, I'm just looking for files, but it's the wrong tool. It's this, it's the chords out of the string function. So this one, I'm going to do something like strict recursive descent on this. Uh, starting at the position x0 here, and then, yeah, I'm just going to accumulate the coordinates straight up. So the string is going to be an empty list, and when I'm done with this, no matter, no matter what the coordinate is, I'm going to return the empty list. So this is going to be every single line. So when I'm done with a line, and so the list for a line is empty, uh, I'm going to take my x and my y, and I'm going to coordinates t. x is equal to 0 again, y is equal to y plus 1. And there is no point on this one. Uh, OK, coordinates when I have a regular line. But the value is an empty is an empty point. I'm going to 
x, y. Ignore the point and return towards the x plus 1 and just y. And the final one, when I get what is actually a valid value, x, y, I'm going to get the coordinates. Um, now I have a point which is going to be x and y in the coordinates to Oh, whoops. I'm going to call this one when the list is empty. Yeah, it's going to be in the tail. Because otherwise I'll, I'll, I would be dropping parts of my lists or parts of my rows. So X is in T. X plus 1 remains the same, and Y. And end of the list. And I think this should work. X is unused. Big whoop. Warning here for the export all. No problem. Uh, test map 1. That was the call. That was not good. So let's see. Bad return value. Ha <laughs> ha. What is this supposed to be? Oh. That was not even a good test. Okay. Now it fails, but it fails with the value of coordinates. Oh. Oh crap, I forgot to <laughs> do the line breaks. So it's going to be, you know, string. Like seams of string with line breaks. Here we go. Only one of them. Oh, wait. X and Y would be. Oh god, yeah, I didn't sort them properly myself. Let's just sort both of the inputs. That way I know I get the same result. I don't care that they are in any given order, as long as they're in the right one. The bug map does not exist. That's fine. The bug map is not going to be here for a quick period of time. Okay, so one thing I can do... Um, with these is I'm probably just going to, you know, uh, turn them into an actual map. And the reason for that is only because it's going to be a lot easier to skip around and find all the neighbors and just accumulate the kind of hopping and stepping I've had to do to find each one of them. Um, so here I'm going to hope that my map is the same as this other one. Of course it's going to fail in this one because I'm only getting a list and I'm hoping for a map. Oh, woo. Whoa, 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 whoa. This is not the same step at all. Good thing I tested that. So what I'm hoping to get is the chord and the value zero for each of these. Uh, and I am going to uh, hold on. Just let me format this a bit nicer. From list to chord from this is going to be the coordinate is what I get in that pretty little list in here. So it's a big literal one, but I don't care. I only need to do it once. Uh, and here is my other list. Here's this. Here's the maps from list comparison. And okay, my big assertion for that one is not pretty, but it's clear. And now it breaks with the right format I expected to have in the map, which is each of them sees zero things. Um, and so here is going to be the same thing, Matt. 
I'm going to do exactly the same kind of transformation uh, that I wanted to have, which is going to be a chord and a value of zero, where each chord is the result in a this. And I'm going to call maps from lists on this same thing that I think now. Okay. And now I fail on debug map. Good. Now, the next step on this one, I guess, is going to be uh, finding out if the results of each one of them, how am I going to get from this to this one. So, uh, you know, I, I kind of very much dislike that I'm going to have to recreate this exact map as part of my output. Uh, I might readjust the tests a bit, but we'll see. This is going to be a longer day than I thought, just because I want to do it <laughs> clever or something. Uh, so I'm going to just rework here. You know, my debug map and the result I expect. I'm going to uh, change them a bit and do that when I'm post. So this video is not super long for any reason. This is just you know tedious work that is not going to be interesting. All right, so you can see the kind of little map I wanted instead. I've just turned it into the same internal representation I had for this. And uh, it's no smart stuff. It's just really counting a whole lot. All right, so looking at these things, um, I'm going to, you know, this is not going to be just a debug map, but I'm going to work from it. Debug map, I'm going to pass it in the, uh, it's asking for the entire raw map. So string, I'm going to give it the, of the string, this is going to give me the base map. I'm just going to call it the map. I've specialized the other ones. And if I return this, I'm going to get a failing test, but it's all right. Where the result was expected to be these values, but now I have the other one. So I'm going to need, to need to do a search of all the values I have in the map and see if the stepping kind of works. And uh, the thing I thought to do that one is I'm going to first need, uh, you know, the max X value and the max Y value. Um, and I'm going to get these by uh, doing this little all the X's, all the Y. Oh, actually, I'm going to just uh, X's, all the Y's are going to be the lists unzip of the maps, keys of the map here that I have. I believe this will give me all of them. So max X is going to be And to be the list x of y's. And you now I'm going to use the common test debug output just to make sure I have the right data in this one. And I'm going to make it max x and max y and still return the map. And then we'll see in the test output what kind of debugging stuff I have. Um, and so in the output, 4.4 four gives me the size of my grid. Uh, and the thing that's interesting and the reason I'm doing this is that if you give me a map, for example, that, uh, you know, this was a point, this was a point, and this was a point, it would automatically give me chances of calling down my, my search space by stopping any coordinates or any stepping 
that is uh, outside of that. Actually, I don't think I need these because I just need to check all of the points directly. Um, but we'll see about that. Oh yeah, I failed earlier than my step. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm actually not going to, what is this? Need this um, because of something else that I can do. Yeah, I'm not needing these at all. Uh, so let's search the points in the map and searching the points in the map. No, I'm just going to call it search, otherwise it's going to use a lot of real estate. I'm going to, I have my, you know, the base map, but I'm going to have an accumulator here. Um, that is going to be all the moves I can do, or that I have done to find any previous points in the map at this time. Um, yep. All right. And uh, I'm going to also, if I store the horizontal, I'm going to have uh, a counter, which is going to be how many items I've seen, which I'm going to set to zero. I'm going to have that. And then I'm wondering if I need to do a clever check for something that is horizontal or uh, vertical matches. Um, but we'll see about that. And here I'm going to have my iteration for each. Uh, I'm going to do this differently. So I'm going to do this one for, um, let's see. Um, so this is going to be called for each individual point, but I'm going to want to do that for all the points in the map. So um, this is going to be something in the maps module, and there is one where it's just going to be a maps fold, I guess, gives me Let's see what maps fold gives me. Maps fold, yeah, it's an iterator with just an accumulator. I'm just going to do it with uh, just the keys. I don't care for it. And this is going to give me all my iterations to do. For each of these, I'm going to do my search. I'm not quite sure what all the arguments are going to be again. This is going to be a point that I search. It's going to be equal to this in there. And I'm just going to return this and see what I get at this point. Uh, I'm also going to I'm going to start two maps. We'll see. Uh, there's going to be an accumulator for this. And I'm going to figure it out as I go. I'm going to rework it. This is going to be the point. This is going to be all the maps. This is going to be the scene count. This is going to be the move store. And um, No, I'm not going to use this one right away. I'm going to start with a simpler one and I, I can fix the other ones later. So this is my point. So for each point in the map that I have, okay, how am I storing this? Uh, I could store the moves individually that way by doing a recursive search on each of them. I no longer need the map. I'm also going to need, okay, just the key. There's going to be maps, keys of the map in here. I'm going to use the keys minus the point because I don't want to search myself. And here to avoid doing it twice, it's going to be the keys again. 
so this is going to be my x and y. This is going to be the other point for all the points. And I'm going to be done, base case, when my point, personal point here, is done. I have a scene value. I don't care for the moves. And I'm going to return the point and the scene values. And then that's going to let me build another map with the values I wanted to have. So for this one, uh, I'm going to I'm going to call this one AX and BY. This is going to be BX and BY. And what I'm going to do with this one is uh, you know, the difference between AX and BX is going to be my moving and um, the difference between, I'm going to do it the other way because I'm going to start. It's going to be the same, but it's going to work with numbers. My mind understands a bit better. This is going to be my move. And so what I'm going to do is And I'm going to make that the smallest one possible because right now, okay, let me get you through what I'm thinking. So if I start with this one, I will first see a here. Uh, this is one and three. This is not easy to divide. This is D would be yeah, three down, two to the right. Not, e not easy to divide. Um, do I have one that is, yeah, four down? and two to the right. So four down and two to the right, essentially the smallest value I could make to divide because you see that F here is still in the same line of sight. So it's not just four down and two to the right, it's two down and one to the right. It is the smallest possible reduction I can make of um, like the least common div divider or something. So at least common divider for a point, I'm going to figure it out later. And then what I can do is that K's uh, move, oops, this is just going to be a move. And if this move that I reduced is in the map, uh, and just, yeah, true. If it's in there, then I know I have seen this point and I skip it. And so I can search again for AX, B, uh, oh, wait, those are. That should be AY. AY uh, on points for scene unchanged and moves unchanged. If it is not in there, and so I have an empty map, then it exists. And so I'm going to keep searching AX, AY with points. What scene is now plus one and um, moves is going to have uh, move in it set to true. And then I can, ski, I, I can keep searching. And this is going to be the entire search. So now what I need to do is the little least common div divider that I have. Uh, it's not the, yeah, between the two values. So I'm going to just keep it as a point a and b and there's a common algorithm for that i won't pretend that i know it by heart uh let me get back to the google search i had a few days ago is going to be least common divisor or divider i don't remember the right term in english uh, least common multiple yeah least common multiple, that might be it. LCMAB, okay, oh, let's, how do they implement it? Did you, because there is a recursive example that's, oh, it's the greatest common divide. Okay, 
suppose they're plan. I, I I don't need these. Oh god. All right, all right, all right. It's a common recursive function. LCM00 is a common. So LCM is A times B. Oh, God. Okay. I'm going to go search for the thing in a place that lets me, you know, not use the goddamn LaTeX thing on JavaScript and come back with it because I, I'm tired. Okay. So here's the algorithm. It's the greatest common divisor, and this is called the Euclid's algorithm. And it's essentially just going to be dividing a number against itself as many times as you want. So for two digits, if I have two and four, it's going to tell me that two is the biggest thing that divides both of them equally. So what I'm going to do for my moves is declare something called minimal step. And uh, minimal step is going to take a point A and B. The thing I'm going to do then is to take the uh, greatest common div divider, div div uh, I just read it up and I can't remember which one it is. Anyway, the GCD of A and B, and then the only thing I need to, rec to return is A divided by D, and I'm using integer division, so I'm not switching size uh, types and mixing things. And this should hopefully work. So I'm going to start the shell I had here and day 10, uh, the min step that I need to do something like three and six should then be one and three. Uh, oh yeah, one and two, that's much better than what I was telling myself. This one is not going to be better, but yeah, that one is one, two. And so when I was thinking of doing all my horizontal moves, oh, I got a little bug on that one because I cannot divide by zero and it's going to loop forever. So I need to adapt the algorithm a little bit. Um, when either value is going to be zero. Uh, you know what? I'm going to make a, yeah. Uh, a or B. I'm not going to put it there. It's just going to be in min step because I don't want to divide anything that is going to have. I don't need to. This is going to divide by itself. Just one. I think that should be fine. And stop the thing. Oh, uh, that's not what I wanted. Okay. So I'm going to cover it here. If this one is zero, uh, I don't care what this one is. The value is now zero one because that's the step that will cover all the horizontal and vertical things. So instead of this one, when this one is zero, I'm going to get one and zero. I'm just reducing these steps. The rest of them requires to have both calculations and shouldn't be a problem. So I assume that this is going to be fine because the moment I do, well, that one is always going to be the same, but I would need to have something like this. Five one is going to be that way. It's, it would need to be an even number and then two is going to be four. And four, six, four, three. All right, that's going to give me the proper steps I need for all of these. So this should technically be sufficient for all of my searches and finding the point. So let's see what we get with a test suite. We seem to be in a kind of infinite loop somewhere. All right, um, how do we find out about this one? So I'm going to do a little trick. This is a feature I've added to Rebar 3 um, a short while ago, 
I have not used it very frequently at this point in time, uh, but it's going to prove kind of useful. So here, uh, the coordinates, this is fine. The debug map is the one I want to handle. I'm going to set myself a breakpoint here. And this breakpoint is going to be ignored in all cases, except when I run things from the shell and um, sync do common tests, if I recall. Okay, that's not how that feature work. Was it not called that? Uh, let me think a tiny, tiny bit. Uh, oh yeah, not the right task name. <sighs> here we go, breakpoint is hit. So here now I am in an interactive shell. Uh, wait, I already had, oh, day five failed. That's not that big deal. So the thing I'm going to set now is going to be my recon tracing I had from the other day for all the calls. And uh, here I'm going to whoops, look into uh, the search steps I'm making. I'm guessing that the search step is supposed to go through. So it might be min step that's going forever, but we'll see right about that. I'm going to trace all the freaking thing. That's going to be simpler. So day 10, all the freaking thing. Uh, don't care for the return value at this point. Why not do a thousand of them? I won't be able to read it all. The scope is local. Okay, and then R3, resume. Uh, I got a negative value in one of them. Can I get the first one? I can't get the first one, so I'm going to do it again, but with a shorter scope for these, but not yet. So I'm going to rerun my suite. Oh yeah, I'm in an infinite loop still. Damn it, does it work now? I think I need to restart the shell because it's a sync as a test run, but in a different thing. So I'm just going to call 10 of them. I try resume, then I can debug my tests. Okay, I need more than that. Go going to go in between and ask for, you know, 500 of them. That should be something I can keep in my back stroll on this terminal. And resume. All right. Yeah. Okay. So what was my wrong value? I think. Oh, I had. Coordinate to a zero and five, that's good, okay. Negative steps. Oh, buddy, okay. That, I can just use the absolute values on these. I think it should be safe. Um, I think that this should be safe because I'm going to do the final division using the negative ones, but I don't really care which direction it is. It should always be dividing the same kind of way. So I'm going to just run the tests. I'm leaving the breakpoint in, and that's usually fine. That's good. Oh, here we go. So you see that? Just that I have my search. It seems to work. Six, seven, seven on zero, two, one. I don't have the same format for them, uh, but I think I have something that's close to working. Good. All right, this is... This is fun for once. Uh, <laughs> and so, okay, I have all my search points for each of them and I can just turn that maps. Uh, no, I'm going to keep this search is exactly the result I want. I don't want it in the thing, but I want it for the demog map. So from list, what do I get? E bar three, uh, no, I don't want to show that. I want the test suite. Really? Why is it failing now? Because I feel like I've got the right result. Expected 026, 107, 127. That's a bummer. 6, 3, 4, 8, 4, 0, 7, 4, 2, 5, 4, 3, 6, 4, 3, 7. Oh, 
that's going to be a bit annoying to figure out then. So 1, 2 is giving me 6 instead of them. Hmm. So here's what I'm going to do with that result. I'm going to change this. value here it's going to be instantly bad actually let's see if I have seen it and the thing is I have too many of them so moves that I have that shouldn't be moves are being spotted uh, and I always remove my own point from the map itself this should be fine. Um, minimal number of steps. If it has been seen, if it has not been seen, put it in there. But it's always the minimal step for it. So I'm going to do some debug output for the test itself. And I'm going to go, so I'm doing this. So I'm going to say that bay x minus ax and by minus ay is giving me the move and then I'm going to be see what I get in these all right all the input has been captured uh, that's not a friendly format but anyway okay one minus two is the same uh, it might have to do with the negative points where the step being one direction or the other. Now that shouldn't be a problem. One zero two zero one zero that's good. Three zero being one zero, that's good. Three two being three two, that's good. Four minus two okay, so I'm going to enrich this a little bit with like this. I want to see as well which are the two points I'm comparing. So AX, AY, BX, BY, and move. Let's see my pretty little output here. Okay. So from 0 to 210, that is indeed uh, going down and back. I'm starting in 0, 2. Okay, I'm starting in random points. That's fine. From 0, 2 to then that's 1, 0. That's 1, 0, and it's skipped. That's 1, 0, and it's skipped. It's rooted to 3, 4. That's giving me... Oh! Okay, now that's good. That's giving me a move from 3, 2. That remains 3, 2. That's fine. Actually, do I remember which one of my points was bad? Because I, I should this one is good, so I don't need to trace it. Um, it's one two was a bad one, so I'm going to go look for one two being my origin point here. So here one two to zero two, that's minus one zero. Oh. Okay, here's the problem. Oh, why is minus one zero? Oh, I. See. Wait. So here, aha, I need to maintain the sign. Uh, okay. So here, yeah, okay. So if I have minus five here, I want to return minus one. So the thing I'm going to do is uh, there's a very simple one which is going to be uh, why fight it the absolute of y I think should be giving the right result because it's always going to be 1 and x divided by the absolute of 
x should be giving the right result. Let's see what we get with this. I'm going to uh, just use a shell because if I'm using, for example, minus 5 and the absolute of minus 5, I'm going to get minus, uh, yeah, I'm using the full integer division. But if I have here what should be a positive value, so this should in theory work. I'm going to keep all my debug output and see what I get. The test passes. Okay, so now I'm going to take out the debug output for this one. And I have what should be a valid test for step one. Uh, so that's okay. I think I've got the right algorithm for all of them. And the thing is that I'm not necessarily planning to get all the results in there. So I'm going to go straight up for the big ass maps, I think. Uh, I'm going to add these tests, but I'm not going to translate them. So, okay. I'm going to uh, add a cool second map here. And I'm going to make a test slightly different. So for this, I'm going to introduce this entire bit. So here. All right. Uh, And for all of these, I'm going to that way. And my result for this one was supposed to be 5, 8 with 33. Uh, with 33 that's my result so I'm going to add test map 2 and test map 2 is going to also ignore the configuration I'm going to keep the breakpoint there's uh, no I'm going to drop it there's no reason to keep it around this here and uh, instead of returning the debug map now I would simply assert equal with that my result is what day 10 uh, best point on the map is all right and the best point on the map it's just going to be um, on a string is going to be exactly the same kind of input as the debug map but instead of being a map from list I'm just going to uh, use the map I'm searching and find the greatest value. So here, what I'm going to have is uh, I have the scene count and I'm going to just list um, I want the greatest value for each of these. So I'm going to, you know what, just list max of uh, val the value in the key being swapped for each key and value I have here. That's going to give me a two passing. Uh, yeah, I could make it more effective, but that's not going to be the costliest operation in this juncture. Eight, three, four. Oh. <laughs> yeah, okay. Uh, count point is equal to that and I want the opposite which is going to be the point and the count three four eight and the thing I expected for test map two was All right that's not what I asked for uh, what's my test like I'm still using map one. There we go. And the test passes. Okay. So I'm going to add now one big last one to go with it. And if that one works, I'm assuming the entire thing works for the next step. Am I able to? Yeah. Okay. 
And so here it's going to be map three, paste mode. Uh, here we go. Uh, here it's going to be a line break in this. Oops. Line break and a thing. And the result they wanted for this one was the point 11, 13, 2, 10. 11, 13, and 2, 10. And that means that I'm going to have to map three, which is going to be oop, exactly the same. Usually I would probably factor them out into something different, but here it's, you know, such simple things that who cares. And the third test passed. Okay. That tells me that I am now ready to finalize my thing. Find the best location. How many other asteroids can be detected from the best location? So part one is now going to only be, uh, the string is going to be um, advent input date end. Uh, and I'm going to find the best point for that string and I, don't care for the point, I only want the count, and I'm going to return the count. And so, uh, uh, let's get back in the shell. What's Ubuntu advantage? I don't even know that command. All right, uh, advent run 10, 227. And hopefully that works because now the tests are all passing like crazy. And it worked. Okay, what's part two? Uh, the two solutions complete. Okay, there are simply too many asteroids. In addition to an asteroid scanner, the new monitoring station comes up equipped with a giant rotating laser perfect for vaporizing asteroids. The laser starts by pointing up and always rotate clockwise. Okay, if multiple asteroids are exactly in line with the station, the laser only has enough power to vaporize one of them before continuing its rotation. In other words, the same asteroids that can be detected can be vaporized. Okay. But if vaporizing one asteroid makes another one detectable, the newly detected asteroid won't be vaporized until the laser has returned to the same position by rotating a full 30, 60 degree. Okay, consider what is during the imagery station laser is marked X. Okay, note that some storage's Wait, where am I? X, okay, one, two, because it's a different, okay, I don't mind for that. The ones behind one, five, and seven won't uh, until the next rotation. Oh no, okay. The next in line to be vaporized are, boom, okay. The next nine to be vaporized are, then boom. Finally, the laser completes its full rotation. One for three, one for three, that's true. Wait. Okay, there's just uh, some asteroids, but it's still the first ones, okay. Second rotation, first rate, very phase, the ninth, third, third rotation. Okay. Elves are placing bets on which will be the 200th asteroid to be vaporized. Okay. That's not necessarily too bad, I guess. Because for, okay, I think I get what I need to do here. 
And so uh, let's say I have this map and I'm clearing stuff in there. Uh, I will need to, on the first rotation, I'm going to be able to, okay. So I will still use the kind of search I have here, but I'm going to need to modify it and call it Search and Destroy, which is a very cool name. Um, <laughs> and then the thing I'm going to do is that each time I see a move, I'm going to keep the logic kind of similar here, uh, but track a counter of how many I've destroyed with a point that gives me the zero value when I finally destroyed the last one. I want to have the coordinates of the last one I have destroyed. So I'm going to make um, a cool test destroy test here. And I'm simply going to, you know, uh, I assume that the base logic is kind of right here. I know how to find the moves. I know how to find everything. So um, I'm just going to call it destroy. And I'm going to use the little maps they're giving me. And I'm going to write the final kind of tests for these. And because they're all using that map. So I'm going to use that one map and play everything with that one. And the monitoring station is always on the biggest point for these. So uh, call it the stream. All right, and here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to, wait, what happened here? Yeah, all right. And the thing here is that the monitoring station, I assume to be right from another step. So I'm not even marking that one anymore. I'm going to find that dynamically as part of the problem. Uh, okay. And then the um, I can have a crap load of cool tests for this one, uh, which is going to be this. And I'm going to play with formatting a bit. Uh, let me pause you and you're going to come back and it's all going to be clear text. All right, so I've reworked all my little pairs based on the description they had. And now all I need to do is, um, you know, um, assert equal, the value of the pair is going to be um, the point with search and destroy. Um, I'm going to pass it the nth value, the string, and the nth value. And I'm going to do this in the loop for, um, and in the point in the pairs. I'm going to return OK here. Oh, yeah, it's going to be day 10, search and destroy. And of course, it's going to explode violently on this one because the function does not exist. So I'm going to now call uh, search and destroy of a map. So I'm going to reuse these two functions. I'm just going to uh, rename for the map. And I think I had the, oops. I had the little value is past second nth of it. Uh, the key is there. That's good. The points are there. Search and destroy. And I'm going to go for the nth value here. Oh, wait, no. Nope, 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 nope. Not yet. So I'm going to first search for uh, what 
is it the best point is going to be on the string goddammit. The coordinates is already there, it's already search max. I'm going to do this and steal it directly. I don't care for the count, I only want the point. So this is going to be the point I search from. Okay. I'm counting from this one, uh, but I am also using the int value as a kind of final counter for this one. Uh, number destroyed, I no longer need that. I'll still need the moves though. Okay. So search and destroy is going to be a copy. Oh, I already have my copy here. And destroy is going to end when I'm done here. The scene count no longer exists. No, nope, that's not the one. That's going to remain a count to destroy and that's cool and that's going to I, I think that in the thing they want us is they don't care which rotation of the laser it is so uh, I'm going to Okay, my little solution is not as great as I thought it would be. Okay, so I'm going to start by... The nth value is not going to be the same. The scene value for my search and destroy function here is going to be a bit different. So this is setting up the thing, the keys and the points, this is fine. I'm going to keep a set of all the destroyed values that I had in here. I'm going to pass that and it's still going to be called scene. But here's how it's going to go. I'm going to do that. If it's not in there, it's not going for that one. So instead of going for scene plus one, I'm going to add BX and BY to the scene set. And so what I'm going to have here is this map. I'm going to have the new keys. I don't care for them. Okay. So what I will get for this one is going to be a bunch of new points, right? Just going to set more recursive function with the point I want, the map, and the nth value. Okay, and here's the interesting one. So I'm going to call this one that has four arguments. This is the move sets. This is fine. Now uh, I will have to those are the other points this is the map this is your search and return the points in here uh, that one is already gone, so it's going to be all the points. This is an accumulator of those that I've seen. This is an accumulator of the moves that have taken place. And my recursion is going to be to search and destroy. It's, 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 it's search and return. Let me rename that one before I forget. Oops.
And I'm probably breaking my horizontal space on this one, so I'm going to re-indent to be a bit cleaner. Okay, so to explain my train of thought here, what I'm doing is uh, I am doing the same search I was doing, but I'm returning all the points I had. Here I want to have the nth result, so how many I want to destroy, and so when this value becomes zero, that's the answer I wanted. So uh, what I'm going to do then is uh, the number of points I have, so k's length of new points of is going to be, uh, actually let's me just, to kill is going to be these, how many I have to kill, and so if uh, n minus to kill is greater than zero, then uh, search and destroy once again from my point to all the points minus the new points. Uh, that should be the return points, but anyway, that should be. I'm just going to call new points into found. And so I'm dropping these. Uh, I'm no longer needing the. Do I need the map? Where's the map for? I don't actually need to pass in the map, I think, because search and returns does not operate on the map. Is that fine? When I was doing this one, yeah, it doesn't need the map. Okay. Points, and then it's going to be uh, and minus to kill. So I'll go keep going until the value. If and minus to kill is equal exactly to zero, then I know that the last the, 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 the point I want last is going to be the last point that was found. And if kill is smaller than zero, then I will need to and in to kill. I will want the nth element of that list. I think that's the one. So uh, nth, uh, three of A, B, C, D. Yeah. All right. Uh, and so that might just work. Uh, syntax error before to kill. There we go. Search and destroy. Map nth value. Um, let's see what we get. Bad map. Ooh. Uh, because I'm calling search and destroy directly, and here I'm assuming it's a map. <laughs> of this kind, but it is not. I need to first turn it into, whoops. God. Hot dog fingers. All right. Hey. Our line length. I'm returning a tuple. Oh, I messed up one of the things, I guess. Because it seems to give me all the things to kill. That's already pretty decent. Uh, and it failed on... Okay, so why am I getting a tuple here? This is just a list in the scene elements. The scene is the same. I'm adding this to the scene one. Oh yeah, I'm returning the point. I don't need to return the point and search and return. I just need to return the scene values. Oh yeah, this is not on to kill, it's on found. Okay, 
we got the first failure. I got 112 and they got 01. So that's the first one too. Okay. So the first point they had assumed they got was eleven thirteen. So I'm going to make a little embedded assertion in that one here that uh, the point. And then it's going to crash if it's not the right thing, at least. Damn it. Okay, so maybe it's not the right point to search at. Right. I'm going to assume that maybe I need to... Uh, Sorry, I have a little bit of a cough there. I'm going to have to search for... Okay. So I'm going to make a... Little thing here where I could give the start point. And... So this is going to be my search. This is going to be the point. This is fine on its own. I'm just going to make a sibling function. Why well, I give it the starting point? Well, I'm going to check because I kind of trust my first coordinate anyway. Finding the point is not the big deal for this one. What I'm really into is finding this stuff. So I'm going to just make an accessor function here that's purely used for testing purposes. Uh, Alright, that one is going to be called Seek and Destroy. And we're just going to call Seek and Destroy a private function for our things. And so here the point, the starting point that they had mentioned was Wait, did they not specify which one it was? How did I assume that I had the God, my assertion was wrong, wasn't it? Okay, it broke. That's good. I assumed it was 8-3. Let's count if it is 8-3 at least. So, uh, it was this point here. Let's count it on their map. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Oh, no. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 0, 1, 2, 3. So, I had the right point. This is not the bug. Okay. So, I'm breaking my logic elsewhere, then. The first one to be destroyed is going to be this. So, I'm going to do it the old way. And, uh... See how that goes. Oh, 14 0. They wanted 11 12 minus here. Oh, I'm not starting at the top of the circle. I'm starting at the uh, first of all, I'm starting horizontally, I guess, in uh, none in non-defined order and not in the point order that they have and I am starting in the wrong way god damn it okay 
So I'm going to have to reorder my points uh, in all my keys to be sorted in the exact map order. So that's going to be my coordinate function here. You know, I do a map from a list. Um, I need to start looking by the closest points from the one I have, which is going to be, how am I going to do this? All right. Um, I'm going to think about it. I need to take a break and do my work day. I'm going to continue this problem a bit later and figure out how I might do this as part of that. All right. So this is a bit, uh, around my lunchtime and uh, one of the things that I figured out while thinking is uh, how I'm going to do the second step without having to rebuild the entire thing from scratch. So I played a bunch with, um, you know, uh, figuring out I have all these points from A to L on this map. I have my central point that is uh, relatively at the center of everything and all the coordinates are moving relative to it. And for me, the question was, how am I going to be able to know uh, that, you know, uh, in this case, something like F and G are both in a line, uh, but I need to get F before all the other ones. And I'm aware that there's probably a nice mathy way to do it with uh, line calculations and everything. But uh, I wanted to keep working with the steps that we have right now, just because the moving blocks are more or less in place. And the thing I found out is that I think I can get it to work if what I do is that I have uh, this sorting order for all the points. So, uh, for example, the thing that I could do uh, for a bunch of them would be to, uh, actually it might be the opposite there the angle the steps and the point and the um, angle is going to be calculated by looking at all the steps that I have so that if I have something like you know uh, one and one that's obviously a 45 degree angle that I have in them um, and, and if I have something different it's going to be based on all of these quadrants and so if I go to this one and I run uh, math tangent and I had something like, you know, three to the right and five to the top. This is going to give me this value in here. If instead I'm doing a five, five, I'm getting to a higher value, uh, five, seven and whatnot. Those all let me sort uh, for each quadrant. So top right is going to be this calculation with these concepts. Uh, bottom right is going that one, that one, that one. And I can calculate this angle for each of the kind of, you know, the moves I have. So if I have, uh, you know, uh, three, six, and then I have uh, six and 12, those are the same three, six motion. And so I can order all of these angles the way I want. And the thing I can do is that for each point, I know for the step it has as a given angle, how many times I need to apply the smallest one and then sort them. And so I'm going to be able to have a thing where, um, you know, A always comes after B because B is a bit higher from the angle here. Uh, C comes next, D comes after. And when I get this little conflict, both of them will have the same angle. But the steps of F are going to be smaller than the steps of G. And then I go, I'll, I'll be able to eliminate all of them as I go. So uh, I will need to rework this thing a bit. Um, I found my point. This is fine. The other thing I'm going to do then, um, instead of search and destroy, I'm going to um, gather moves with it. Uh, I'm not going to use the nth value, search and destroy, I'm going to break this one, although the logic could have been useful, search and return, uh, I'm going to work from that, gather moves, and okay, so 
for this, what I'm going to return here is uh, I have my point, I have the keys. I'm going to store all the possible moves in a map and uh, yeah, I want all the possible moves to calculate the angle. And then I will want to have all the points and the move uh, that they map to. So I'm going to store these in actually two maps, one for the moves, one for the points. That should be all right. So I will return uh, those are going to be mappings and moves. And hopefully this works. I think it should. So here this remains the same I have. So mappings and moves. The minimum number of step is going to be this. I'm going to change what I'm doing here because I want the greatest common divisors in there. I'm going to want to use that ratio. So it's not exactly, I'm still going to need the min step, uh, but I'm going to make it a bit special, which is going to be, uh, instead of min step, it's going to be step count. And I'm going to change this function a tiny bit where I am also going to uh, return the greatest common divider for these. Uh, in this case, it's always going to be, uh, it's not going to be, it's going to be absolute and absolute of X. All right. So that's going to return me one and the number of steps for each one of them that I'm going to need in the step count. So, um, that's going to be the move. That's going to be the steps. If the move has been put in there. So I won't need to do exactly the same search now. Instead of gather moves, it's going to be AX, AY remains there. Points uh, in my mappings, which was intended to be uh, BX, BY is going to point to um, I might want to flip that one around so let's start with because the, the thing I can do is that I can either map from you know BX to BY to uh, to move in steps but the thing is that I will rather need to do something like calculate from the move uh, I will probably need to have a list of, you know, steps and uh, all of these. And since I need them for all the points, I'm not going to take a map for this. I'm going to take a list. That's going to be fine. Um, yeah. I think I can get away with this, these three. Uh, it's just going to be the moves. And I'll transform the list later. So uh, for this one instead, I will start creating my kind of tuple here, which instead of being the angle, it's going to be uh, the move. And uh, the steps remains there and the point BX and BY is going to be what I store in this fun little list of moves. And that's all I need to do for this one. I no longer need to do a kind of search and return recursively. I have all of them. So now that I have all the moves, the thing I'm going to do is, um, you know, I, I will have to create that final list of all the angles and all the steps. So I'm going to make one for each of the quadrants I have, and I'm going to start with the top one. 
So here is going to be uh, math eighteen of it's going to be a sorted list eighteen of uh, x over y. Uh, the other one was going to be the steps and the point. And this is going to be based on uh, what I had here was x, y in the list, steps, point that way in moves, but only those where, uh, as I said, x is greater than zero, and y is that like this. Can I fit this in one line? Oh, that's way too long. All right. And I'm going to add this to to the next one is going to be the absolute value because I'm doing the second quadrant going clockwise. So it's going to be y over x for the same thing, but the conditions now is x is greater than zero and y is smaller or equal to zero. And the thing I've done with these is that, for example, the zero point, uh, this axis belongs to that quadrant. This axis, the x on top, belongs to the top right. This one to the bottom right. This one here to bottom left. And this one here to top left. Uh, just because I wanted to avoid having to divide by zero all the time. So steps, point, that's going to be good. I'm going to add the two of these. And so bottom corner is still x on y in the arc tangent in the calculation, uh, but it's now x is smaller than zero and y is smaller than zero. And I'm back to the absolute for the top left on x, y, but the difference now is that, uh, what is it? It's x smaller than zero and y greater or equal. So x smaller than zero, x greater than or equal to zero. And this should give me uh, the list of all the points I have to cross in the right order for each single quadrant that I have. Oh, but that's only going to cover each quadrant one by one, right? Because those are not all merged together. So I'm going to have to uh, only kill all the steps once and whatnot. All right. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to, oops, not this way. I'm going to keep the sorting order. That's going to be fine. Um, and what I will do with these, this is going to be candidates. And let me just indent a bit so it's clear that this is different. So the thing I wanted to have then is uh, kill until I reach the nth point of all candidates. So I am in the right order. I am in the right step. Uh, I'm going to start at uh, one step is going to be my count that I do. Okay, let's see what I'm going to do. Okay, that's, this is going to be a recursive function. And the thing I'm going to do is scan the entire list for all the first steps. Drop these as I go. Once the list is done, I get to uh, nth to reduce the count each time. So uh, new candidates is going to be equal to kill the ants, the candidates. And I will start at, uh, you know, count of step being one. Okay. Kind of step being one, that's fine. I'm thinking as I go, but I can't think all the things out loud. Can't. Uh, okay. 
so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to just uh, to kill is going to be uh, all the candidates. I no longer need actually. I'm not going to need the angle anymore because all of these are going to be. Uh, I'm going to keep it anyway, just because it keeps things unique and easier to delete. So I am going to have, which is uh, the angle, the steps, the point. This is the candidate for all the candidates that I have. But I want the steps to be equal to n. And so that's going to just give me those I keep. Uh, to keep is therefore going to be those where it is not equal to end. So um, uh, I had a quick fun list. Let me go look into my uh, program history here. You'll see what I want. I want my, my little if function that I had from a good while ago. Two hours, in. yeah, that sounds like I destroyed. That's the one I want. This right here. So I'm going to select that, close that thing. Keep my logic that I had in here. So if nth, uh, length to kill is going to be length of to kill. If length to kill is greater than zero, then I know those are all destroyed, so I'm going to kill nth minus length to kill. Uh, I'm going to go with those are to keep uh, is going to be step plus one and to keep. And I'm going to search recursively that way. Otherwise, uh, if and land to kill, land to kill is greater than zero. List last. And the thing I want is only the point, uh, but that's going to be fine. So I'm going to take this. This is going to give me the angle, the steps, and the point. And I will return only the point. Okay, let's see what explodes there. Gather moves is unspecified. Uh, it is here, but there's a mistake, okay. RD's point is shadow. Origin. Origin. Yeah, point is, where's point now? I don't think that it's shadow. Anyway, let's fix the gather moves one. Uh, head mismatch, of course. I kept the mappings in here. And I don't want the mappings anymore. Uh, okay, let's rename. I'm fine with that. To kill, to kill. Found, found. That's right, it's not needed. And even for these, I don't need to match on angle. Nor on the point. The order should be preserved. To kill isn't bound, that should be found in here. Okay. Now, why is it? bothering me with this point isn't bound that's going to be origin okay and I still have the same entry point for this I believe which is search and destroy so we're going to see what we get uh, no 
got another endless loop. Or maybe it's just calculating, but very, very slowly. All right. So we are going to have to debug this little test and figure out where we're at for each of them. I'm going to set my little breakpoint. And I'm going to go into really uh, the call for gather moves is the one I'm going to be interested in at first. So shell that should be R3 async do CT breakpoint. All right, uh, recon trace calls. Um, and here I'm going to do day 10. Uh, what did I say I wanted? I wanted to have got to moves. And I want to see. I can do it that way. The scope is already public, I believe. And so, uh, resume. What? That should uh, come on. Gather moves should be Oh god, it should be step count in here. Oh whoa. yep. I'm guessing I was having some kind of crash, but I don't know why it wouldn't show it to me. There we go. Okay, 10-4 and 11-12. Uh, so, we're going to output all of these little candidates. And my kill step, those should all be sorted. I'll see if my output makes sense there. First one. So 10-4 is my first candidate for it before 15-4, which is the same height and different 12-3. And they're asking me, the first one I should kill according to them is... 11, 12. And 11, 12. Wait. Is this the one I'm failing? Yeah, 11, 12. Where is 11, 12? 11, 12. Where is it? It's not even in my map. Really? What the hell? Oh, all right, I'm going to figure that one out and come back after the fact. Okay, here's a problem. I was running my tests with the wrong map. This is the map where they're giving me the numbers. It's the large one. All right, so let's go back to my test. Hopefully, uh, that should be map three is the large map. Hopefully, my logic is good anyway. Uh, those are all badly indebted. God damn it. So, this is going to be the string. I don't care for the result. It is map 3. Uh, hopefully, <laughs> I'm gonna get 11, 12, and I get 11, 14. Okay, so good. Those are all set to the angle zero. Okay, and they're telling me. Wait, wait, wait. 
Another one, 12. Let's go. Rain. I should be at 11, 13. So, 11 down and 13 to the right. Oops. That's zero. Online zero, so. Uh, 11 and 13 is what they're telling me. Is that one? Yeah, so it should be right above. And since my center was 11, 13, then it follows that it should be 11, 12. But do I even have an 11, 12 point in here? Yes. It's also sorted as zero. So it's possibly my quadrants are not in the right order for that one. Oh God, I get it. Okay. I have all my moves based on the point itself. Here, when I gather my steps here, um, I stored the point itself, but uh, and the move is shortest one. Now that should work. The move is the right one. Because if I just, I'm just going to, uh, keep this one as a kind of differentiating value should be able to see what kind of move was required for each of them. Um, oh yeah, that broke other things down the... Here it's no longer this, it's this here as well. So element 12 is going up. Okay, I just need to swap my quadrants. That's not too bad. Because this one here is going up rather. Because if my Y's are negative, I'm going up in the full map. Uh, and I'm going... Okay, so I'm going up and right first. So up and right is x greater than zero and y smaller than zero. Then I'm going right and down. So that should be uh, x greater than zero, or smaller than zero. Then I'm going to this direction here, which is going to be uh, to the left and down and to the left and ooh, smaller than zero. That's a swap here, I think. God, I don't know why I swapped my quadrants. That was usually the right thinking though. But, oh yeah, I swapped my Y's and X's in that one. Okay, I got a bad match on line 69. That's here, where I don't care for to move, I just want the thing. Element 12, I wanted element 13. Where's my eleven twelve? Okay. Wait. Where am I now? I want the last result possible. Uh, searching backwards. Okay, that's the one. 
So that's the line I want, but this is going on x is 0 for the steps on this. And minus 1 is going to be first. God. And then I'm going to... Am I on the wrong axis for this? All right, uh, I need to take another break anyway. Got other things on the side to do. Okay, um, I think I've fixed a few things in here. Uh, I'm going to be jiggling these numbers because essentially the little math I made on paper is no longer right uh, given the changes in the orders of things. So I'm going to jiggle them until I get the right results for most of them. So here I got what I think to be the first test to pass. Uh, and I'm blowing on the second one. And the second one, um, the error is that I'm expecting to find 12-1 and I get 11-12. And if I look at the list of all the candidate points, 11-12 should be there. 12-1 uh, is here. This is both at step uh, one, so it, they should be in the right order. And uh, the problem for this one, as far as I can say, is just that you know, I wanted the nth candidate, but my check's here. We're certainly not using the right check for this. So let's see if that one works a bit better. And we now blow up at 16-0 uh, when I expected 14-6. 16-0 when I expected 14-6 is... Um, no, there. Yep. So I'm going to jiggle the values a bit more and come back. Okay, so I checked my logic and uh, I fixed essentially my sorting of points. I've checked my candidates, but I've noticed uh, something interesting in there. And so this here should fail. And I'm going to show you what is the problem. It's the kind of same error I had initially. Uh, but the problem I'm finding with some of these candidates, and I'm trying to find the right ones. Uh, for example, do you know here? right those are all the same steps and i have three four and five and the problem with the way i was sorting them is that i was fetching by the number of steps and not their relative order so i would miss this candidate on the round one and two even though it was visible starting on round one it was just three steps away and so let's see if i can fix that so i've got these values there uh, i've got my candidates um, I'm going to rework how the kill function works because now the thing is uh, because I don't need the absolute count here, I only need the relative order, I'm going to clean things up a tiny bit and it should make it uh, a bit clearer. So this is the move and this is going to be the point and I will want the move and the point for each one of the candidates I have in the list and now I'm sorting and I'm working only with two of them so here I no longer need to do that I no longer need to carry the grade here uh, for the point that I have and when I'm killing them no longer requiring that here what I'm going to do instead of um, working that way uh, I'm going to fetch all of them that I see and compare with those behind them if they're duplicate or not because uh, given how I'm sorting them, like duplicates are going to be one after the other. So I have to do a kind of run line compression, but I'm going to bring them into a visible list and an invisible list. And I'm going to do that, which, uh, you know, find visible uh, for my candidates. And I don't need anything else than this. So to kill is be going to be the length of the visible ones. Uh, if... This is now going to be end to kill. I no longer need all of this. It's going to be invisible. Oops. Ah. Uh, and I will keep looking with the invisible ones in a loop. Then if it's not that works the same, it's just going to be visible instead of found. And here's how I'm going to write the um, find visible function. So. Uh, I'm going to use two accumulator is going to be kill recur the tail recursive so find visible I'm going to have a list those that have see those that can be seen and those that cannot be seen so obviously base case going when it's empty visible 
invisible. And uh, because I'll be building the list one by one, I want to reverse both of them. Uh, reverse visible. Um, let's reverse invisible. That's going my result. So what tells me that a given point, a given move for a point in the list, uh, the tail of the list here is visible. It is going to be visible when it is not already on the list. So if the same move has been seen already um, in the visible list, then it has by elimination to be uh, visible, to be invisible, because there's already a same point with the same move that I got this specific round. So invisible, and that one can be checked later. And then I will just keep accumulating them, and then the last case will have to be find visible when I have a move in a given point in the list. Uh, but at that point, I know it is visible because it didn't match in that case. Then I can just add the term into M, P, into the visible ones and the invisible ones here. And I think this should, well, uh, invisible. Invisible, yeah, invisible. There we go. Oh, already defined. Okay, just going to make it the private version of it. Uh, that should cover all of them, and then we can see if the tests pass. And yes, all four tests passed. So, <laughs> Jesus, this is a long while ago. Um, I no longer need the best point. What I'm looking for now is the, what's the call? It's a straight up search and destroy. Yeah, should have been seek and destroy uh, as I might have. But, but yeah, that way we're avoiding getting sued, I guess. Um, so it's going to be Search and destroy, and what do they want out of point? The 200th to be vaporized, uh, if I'm looking into this. I need to pass the string first. And this is going to be uh, only the point, so x and y is going to be equal to that. And what do they want me to do with it? Uh, x times 100, and then add y. Okay, so, okay, let's see what we do in terms of compiling, advent, uh, run, 10. Oh, I'm not even in the shell. <laughs> Smart man. All right. <laughs> 604. That was fast. Hopefully that works. 604. And it worked. And it worked. Flush around the two hour mark. Jesus. Uh, if I raise them, we do get the result in 37 milliseconds. That is fast. 36 milliseconds to get the result for that thing. I'm curious to see what the other solutions that do more heavy math, aside from that little thing, are able to get in terms of performance on this one. Um, but that should be good enough. Oh yeah, the other thing would be to clearly export all uh, and keep only the test function, but... Uh, I don't mind. I'll cover it a different day or something. I'm just going to kill this one. Export. Uh, what are the two calls? I do in the test. I call best point, debug map, and search and destroy too. So best point is one. Okay. Uh, best best point, debug map, search and destroy two, and that should still work. 
Uh, whoop, error tree. Compile. This is good. And if I run the test, they show it's still passed. And I know that I've not messed up my little cleanup at the end. Oops. Yep, I messed it up. So <laughs> I need to have chords as well to be exported for this one to pass. Uh, I broke something in day five, but at this point I don't care anymore. Okay, day 10 is passing. I'll fix that one offline. Uh, and see you another time for day 11, which hopefully will be shorter. Thank you.